Hello there, everyone, and welcome to The Theorist with your host, JC Botero67. Today, our review is going to be over week two of season 17 of Dancing with the Stars. I do want to start off by saying that I was not aware that the elimination was happening Monday night. So, you know, there was no Tuesday episode. But yeah, I guess it kind of made it interesting. It added a bit of a twist to, you know, what we're usually used to. It's the whole Monday they dance, it was going to be their second chance, and then Tuesday was going to be the elimination. I mean, that's, like I said, it's what we're used to. But this time it was like, okay, Monday they got a second chance with the judges. And then one of them did go home. Unfortunately, that was Keyshawn and Sharna. They had racked up a total of 35 points, but they didn't receive very many votes from the audience, I guess, or they at least got the least amount of support. So, you know, I kind of figured that Bill Nye, the one with the lowest score, wasn't going to go. Like you see, he had a lot of support, especially this week. Uh, People were cheering him on, and he did show improvement, so that was great. So, for the rest of the review, I'm just going to go ahead and do, you know, quick little highlights on each of the dances, and then I will go ahead and talk about my predictions for top five. And I guess I might predict who gets eliminated next week. We'll see about that one. So anyway, we'll start off with Liz and Val. They kicked off the night with a Samba. I thought they did a really good job. I thought it was a well danced number, but you know, uh, Carrie Ann and Bruno gave her an eight, each of them, and then Len gave her a nine. So they totaled out 25 points. I felt that she deserved all nines, should have gotten a 27, but I guess I'm not the dance expert or I don't have influencing power, so, (laughs) but that's what I felt. Next, we had Christina and Mark with a Paso Doble. They also scored 25 points. I liked it for the most part. I noticed a few slip-ups that happened, but they did pretty well. An improved score from last time, so that's always good. And... As you know, last time they got 22 points, so they totaled out for 47 this week. And, uh, you know, I really liked the theme of their number, and the outfits were great, too. Really liked those. Okay, then the third couple to dance was Bill and Emma. Uh, They did a jive, and they scored 21 points. So, again, they improved from last time. They had 18 last week. So their total is now 39 points. I enjoyed the dance. It was great, very enjoyable, and I really liked what Len said to Bill at one point. He said, oh, you looked like Derek from afar. So I thought that was that was a very nice little compliment to go with that. But moving along, we have Jack and Cheryl. They danced a Roomba, and they scored themselves 24 points. So one point above what they had last week. Uh, for a total of 47 between this Monday and last. And in the practice videos, it was great to see his mom, Sharon. Um, Her voice is adorable, I must say. And then, yeah, I mean, the feedback from the judges were hilarious. Um, Len pointed out that he did weird things with his hands. I kind of failed to notice the hands, but I can imagine. Now, I'm not not trying to diss Jack at all. I guess I I kind of... uh, relate to that because seriously I've had pictures where my fingers like I don't know like one hand looks normal but then the other one it's just all over the place and the fingers are it's awkward but anyway I was impressed with Jack in this dance uh he did the splits so that was really cool it's like yeah I used to be able to do the splits I used to be more flexible than I am now and For me to go on a dance floor or stage and do something like that, it's like, no, no. Um, (laughs) But yeah, Bruno was impressed, and he's like, oh, like, for a second there, I thought you weren't going to get up or something. So, you know, very well done for Jack. And I think I wrote down a comment that Tom made, and it was basically, oh, his dad is Ozzy. I think it was in relation to the weird things with his hands comment that Len made. And then the camera focusing on Ozzy, I mean... It's great. But anyway, we come to the eliminee of the night. Keyshawn and Sharna danced a samba. 
their last dance, but, you know, they'll come back for um, the grand finale of season 17 because the stars always come back and, you know, it's great to, like, see them on that stage again, you know? So super excited for that. But anyway, they had scored an 18 and that summed up their total score to 35. I mean, that's not of significance anymore because... They're not going to be dancing next week, but, you know, I still wanted to talk about them. I felt he did improve from last week, and, you know, he was still a bit stiff, as Carrie Ann had pointed out. And um, one last thing I want to want to say about Keyshawn was uh, the comment that Len made to him about his working his assets. So, Len, always creative with what he says to people. And speaking of which... He had done that to Nicole last week with the whole pocket rocket thing. Uh, so Nicole and Sasha were the next ones to dance. They danced a rumba and they got 20 points. You know, it was a shame because what affected her the most here were the lifts that Carrie Ann had pointed out. She obviously would have had a higher score if it weren't for the lifts. But, you know, I did kind of notice her extensions and, like, the way she moved her legs and everything. I liked you know, I liked what she was doing. So she is on the right track. It's just, you know, they've got to be careful with certain dances allowing lifts or not allowing them and then like the limit there is on it. So Sasha, you need to be careful, okay? <laughs> I love you, man, but yes. <laughs> and uh, their total score for the past Monday and this Monday came out to 43. All right, then Leah and Tony danced a samba. And they scored themselves 24 points. I did not feel it was that bad of a dance. But I don't know. The way, the movement of her hips were kind of lacking at times. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, she did score better than last week. So, I mean, she's improving. She's making her way up. And I think what I would like to see... Um, now, I'm not saying... Okay, well, I'm just going to say right now, I, as much as I love Leah, I don't see her making it to the top five, and I could be proved wrong, but I had written a note here that if she were to make it into the top three, that I could see her taking on this dance again and showing how much she's improved and learned from the whole process. So, I mean, it would be nice to see that, but like I said, I don't have her in my list of top five, but... I would love to see her go far because there are a lot of people that want her to fail. And, you know, I love what Tony said. And, you know, I'm very proud of him because he said, I promise to take her far. And, you know, I'm really counting on him to do that because I think these people that want her to fail, it's like, I, I like to think of this as karma. What goes around comes around. You know, she's going to make it far, or she's going to just do well. Whether she wins the mirror ball trophy or not, she's going to do good for herself. And she's going to prove the haters wrong. And the haters that want her to fail, you know, because they wish that upon her, they're going to fail in something. Something's going to happen to them because they're wishing bad on her. And that's all I have to say, because I don't want to get too far into this topic. So yeah, we'll just leave it there. We then come to Bill and I and Tyne. They did a paso. And you know, I thought it was a fun dance. And you could see from the way the crowd reacted and stood up and clapped for him was that, you know, he has so much love and support from, from the crowd. And I love what he said in the video prior to his dance where he said, it's not about who's on top but the comeback you make. And so last week he had scored 14, this week he had scored 17. And he's doing a bit better. So, you know, good for him. Good for him. All right, then uh, taking a break from, from talking about couples here, Julianne Huff is going to be guest judging in two weeks. So, like Tom pointed out, it's going to be, she's going to be on the other side of that judge's table. So it's going to be interesting to see her give constructive criticism or praises instead of being on the dance floor. So looking forward to that, for sure. And now coming back to couples, uh, Corbin and Karina were the next to dance with a jive. They scored themselves 26 points. 
with a total of 50 for the week. And, you know, I have to agree with what Len said. It was a great dance, you know, but it was more of a third base rather than a home run. And that's honestly how I felt. I thought last week's dance was better. I mean, they're different styles. You know, I get that. And they shouldn't be compared. But, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I was expecting something different. I, I'm i not really sure. But, I mean, Corbin's still one of my favorites. And he he's always doing a good job. So hopefully next week he'll do a number that I will embrace more than than what I did with this week's. It was good. I'm not trying to diss it at all. And I do want to point out the lockers. The lockers, I think, were from the Call Me Maybe number in the All-Star season. So it was kind of cool to see those back on stage. But anyway, we then come to Val and Tristan. They did a Paso and they scored 19. So two points lower than what they did last week. Um, She's at a total of 40, though. And, I mean, this woman... Every time I see her, I'm just so impressed. I'm, I just find myself rooting for her to make it far because she is such a fighter. You know, she in the video had said, oh, I'm not letting a little pain in my knee stop me. And, you know, she pulled through this dance. She had a blast. She did moves that the judges were impressed by what she was able to do. So... You know, she made great effort. I mean, the, there were bits that were choppy, but, I mean, she did the best she could. And that's that's what counts. You know, she was putting her heart out there, so I love that. And I also loved the dress she wore. It kind of reminds me of my devil dress. So I was just like, oh, cool. So now I want to, like, dance in that. But anyway, <laughs> moving along to Brant and Peta, they did a rumba, and they scored themselves 23 points. Plus, their 22 from last week brings them to 45 total. And, oh, it was a schmexy dance. Like, schmexy, schmexy, schmexy. I cannot say that because, like, I'm, like, nasally right now. But anyway, I agree with Bruno on why they would stop at the jacket. They could have taken it further. But, of course, Brandt made the point that we're still in week two. So, you know, that makes sense. We'll get to see him shirtless sometime down the road. But anyway, amazing chemistry between the two. You can definitely see it in this dance. And, uh, yeah, I guess Len kind of killed it for us because he's like, oh, I saw you danced pigeon toed through the fog and, you know, I'm not going to go into ecstasy over this. So kind of a little dream crusher. He gave Brandon and Pita a seven compared with the eights that were given to them by Carrie Ann and Bruno. But, you know, it is what it is. So last couple was Amber and Derek, and they did a jive, uh, 24 points compared with last week's 27. But, you know, that happens. I mean, they reached a pretty high top, and, you know, they've they've come down a bit. But that just comes to show that they will improve from that score. And, you know, I th- honestly think right now, I'm just going to say it, Amber and Derek have very high potential to be the first ones of season 17 to get a 10. I honestly think it's between them and Corbin and Karina. But anyway, I was very impressed with the quick moves that she was able to do and the somersault. Like I had mentioned with Jack about not having the flexibility to do the splits. Yeah, for me to do a somersault, that's a total joke. But yeah, very impressive to see Amber being able to do that. So that just adds to her message that she's trying to get across and she does it very well. All right, and then we'll touch base on the elimination real quick. The bottom three were Liz and Val, Keyshawn and Sharna, and Bill and Emma. And for some reason, I had a random and fearful gut feeling that Liz and Val were going to leave. Uh, thankfully, that didn't happen because she's amazing. She's an amazing dancer. And I don't know why she's not getting that much support from people. So I hope people kind of wake up and realize she's good. She deserves to make it far. But anyway, she was spared from being in the bottom two. Bottom two, of course, were Bill and Emma, Keyshawn and Sharna. And, of course, Keyshawn was the one who left. But, you know, he had good spirit about it. And he was thankful about the opportunity to learn how to dance. And, you know, that's great. I commend him for that. All right, and now the moment of truth has come. So, 
My selections for top five are in fifth place, Brant and Peta. In fourth place, Amber and Derek. In third place, Snickle and Sasha. In second place, Christina and Mark. And in first place, drum roll everybody, Corbin and Karina. You know, I went with these five as my top five in that order because I feel, you know, they're some of the stronger dancers. Even if they're, they might not be as strong right now, they, I think down the road, they would gain the strengths and skills. And then, of course, these people have a lot of support from the public. I definitely think so. So, I mean, that's my selection. It just came to mind. I, I guess I have some reasons behind the list, but, I mean, for the most part, I just kind of looked at the list and this is what I came up with. So, if you'd like to hear more reasons, you know, feel free to comment on this video and I will gladly reply. Um, feel free to private message me and... I will get back to you as well. As for the next eliminee, I don't know. I mean, sadly, I want to say Liz and Val or Bill and Emma. Kind of based on what we saw this week as the bottom three. But, you know, that can always fluctuate and change. So at this rate, I'm not really sure who would be eliminated. I can't really say until I've seen them dance again. So I'm probably, I mean, those are the two people that I would think are the next potentials to be eliminated, but, you know, I can't set it in stone. So we'll just stick with the top five that I selected, and, and that's that. So, you know, I hope you guys have a great week this week, and enjoy week three of Dancing with the Stars, and I'll catch you guys here again for the week three review. All right, bye-bye.